I don't even remember them strapping me down. Ah, you're up. Yes, looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. Magic. There. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not a worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officers' quarters. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. Promise. My, aren't we a meek little lamb? Perhaps I needn't have collared you at all. Though it does look darling on you. So let's just leave it on, shall we? Because, to answer your question, what the collar does is this. It makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Now, oh, where did I leave my calipers? It seems as though there's a pattern in the blood flow. That can't be natural. Good gods! There's... There's been a murder here. A young Magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. I'll need to write to headquarters right away. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. You surprised? You're one of them. You know what sorcerers are capable of? Whoever did this found a way around their collar and killed a man. Small ones this time, thank the gods. We'll find out who did it, one way or another. I'll need to write to headquarters right away. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no Voidwalk and followed the source that did this. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. I thought as much. Listen, 
I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Thanks. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. Such a dear lending it to me. The hatch is blocked. I need to find another way. No indication is ever struggle. very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman nor do I sing in fact I'm deathly deathly allergical correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeb refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and get and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. No. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? You presume right. Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Name? The Divine Order wants to know. Well, you aren't here on my list. Scram, eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. No 
I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us wouldn't kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. The Magisters are out for blood. You saw the body, didn't you? Big bruiser like you ought to be able to take them on. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? His eyes snap open. He looks at you and frowns. Murder! Ah, that's what they were going on and on about. I wouldn't know anything about it. I kill a man. He knows who done it. His daddy knows who done it. And the mayor knows who done it too. His eyes flutter shut, and he assumes his position of repose once more. Whether they catch me is another matter, but I ain't one to hide my accomplishments. The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? The fellow cocks his ear, listening. That isn't anger. It's... He cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. There now, just like that. Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. There, you heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for, yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Eh, no indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. Get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Well, well, 
What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Well, we've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of the ship. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? They don't care about us. We're the cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us will kill our own. They're picking us on one. Ah, oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Goodness gracious me, what a bore. Off with you. Quite clearly, you wouldn't have done at all. Shoo. What are you doing here, anyway? Forgive me, Keen. Were that I had more than gruel to serve, if I'd more than cornmeal and rotting roots, I'd concoct something more fitting. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. The indignity. I never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That right. I always knew you'd turn out throat and Ben Nest. Your kind always hung closest to him. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? He tugs the collar of his uniform and chuckles. <laughs> Sorry you're upset, sir. But we all wear what we wear for a reason. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague stricken pigs. Trying on her. And if she tries. I can make your majesty officer. Turnips and water are all I was given. Murder most foul. I'm extremely suspect you all about it. Do you? Well, perhaps you're absolutely right. There has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magister's more concern than your appetite. Don't you get saucy with me when you really don't know the first thing about sauce. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking Magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it, then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer, go affect Magister Siran. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue me, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely.
need to get off this wreck and quick! lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. You hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only... No! Oh, what? What happened? Oh, must have been the turnips. You... You dare strike a royal. Ooh. The lizard's eyes close as he slips into unconsciousness. No, not the final dark. Not yet. It's no use. Your words do not seem to read the dice roll darkly. Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a dire-looking wound.
through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, yes? Shouldn't you be running or screaming or some such? The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. I know your god did not gift you with much, but kindly use the little you were given. Do you look at me and think, why yes, there is someone with organs enough to drown? <sighs> Trifling matters like water and poison do not concern me. No, damp robes are the most I have to fear. Once this glorified skiff hits the sea floor, I will simply walk to shore. Whereas you, I believe, have lifeboats to pointlessly squabble over. I believe you did, although I was wearing the face of an elf at the time. I had a mask, rather ingeniously designed, which allowed me to take that primitive form. A mask that was stolen by that damned witch after her little scene. Still, she'll drown with the rest of these fools and I will simply pluck my mask from her cold, dead hands. The skeleton holds up his book in one quick, frustrated movement. I am trying to discover if there is anyone worth saving, and I will be damned if I let the lives of some mayflies get in my way. Go on! Go, swim or drown or do whatever takes your fancy. I have a book to read. painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You don't recognize the symbol, but it's clearly warning you away. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply grey. The colour drains from your hand, and you are left numb. It doesn't budge. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind.
Children and dwarfs first, just like the old stories say. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes to no avail. Said there were other people down there. We, we need to help them. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time to get the hell out of here. Lies on the floor, unconscious and ble If you could walk, get the on the back. Wait! Void woken!
Rise. Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. I judge Oriven. Those void woke and made short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? This must be Fort Joy. 